Now, today we are going to, we will start by brushing off uh, f- through what we went through last time. And we had already talked about the process of filing. And in the previous class, the previous class, the uh, casting, we saw that even after we finished the process of casting, the finished product, some of the casting itself will on the rough edges. So you have to clean that product. You have to remove that, those rough edges. And one of the processes that you do that is by filing. Essentially, filing is to cut those rough edges, the net of buzz, B U W R S, buzz. You remove the slide, I mean the rough edges, so that uh, you can make your work smooth. Now, files, ile tu lamba tunatumia katika kufanya ikazi ni file. And we mentioned that uh, your files uh, are usually made of high grade steel. Now, this is essentially the cross section drawing number diagram of a file. Ukiwa uambia uchora and label a file, this is the diagram. So I don't know whether you can see it uh, clearly. If not, let me know I enlarge it. Ukiwa ambiwa katika mtihani ama tu popote, at least know the terms ambazo zinatumika katika file for those who were there last time were able to draw it if not uh, this is what uh, a file looks like eh? we have the handle of course eh? we have the tongue the tongue is that uh, sloping place ambayo uh, unaingiza handle eh? we now have the the length the length is where you find your teeth eh ime namba unatumia kusugua your metal mm? uh, we have the face eh? the face is that edge eh? ile in the, the the longitudinal edge and then we have the edge itself pale mwisho heel is that kuna ile part ambayo haina meno that is known as the the heel now files are usually classified according to four major categories yeah we have the type of cut we have the grade of the cut we have the shape of the file and we have size when we talk about a uh, type of cut kuna ile ambayo ni single hiyo meno ime the 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 face eh? of that of that file imekuwa uh cut kama eh? imekuwa divided using uh, sloping eh? singular sloping lines now these lines the angle hapa inaitwa rec angle the line between the angle between your sloping line and the edge yeah? is known as the rec angle r a k e so you'll find that this uh, single cut have a negative rec angle it is going in the anti clockwise direction we have double cut it eh? cut on both sides and then we have rasp cut file when we get to the workshop shule zikufungulia we'll see them in person rasp inaka meno yake inaka kama ile grade ya kitchen it is inaka to the, the easiest way i can explain is it inaka ile grade ya kitchen now according to the grade uh, grade of cut eh? vile vile tu kama sandpaper unaweza endo useme unataka sandpaper from the rough mpaka ile smooth kabisa the grid size of those teeth as well katika file it can be from the rough and in end ikipungua mpaka ile wakati until you get to the smooth uh, cut your file is smooth so kutegemea na ile kazi ambayo unafanya you can want to remove uh, the, the the you can want to remove the 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 edges the rough edges quickly so you'll go and use a rough uh, a rough cut uh, file about uh, nini the, the teeth are widely spaced apart kama unataka kufanya kazi safi you are finishing unaenda tu unachukua ile smooth ile tu kuondoa kidogo tu we have um, now yeah this is how rough uh, rough meno yake iko space yake between the spaces between the two teeth uh, between those cuts of the of the of the of the filer have more space as compared to the smooth now shape of file now depending on the type of work that you're doing you know it tatagamea the type of cross sectional shape of the file that you'll be using if i'm going to be filing around corners i cannot go use a flat file i can't use a flat file if i'm going to be filing uh, i mean uh, if i'm filing a hollow a hollow edge says it to me a flat file i will choose a, a half round file which half of it is flat and half of it is round or am i will choose a fully round file if i'm going to be filing a rectangular 
uh, hole of hole, a uh, rectangular hole. I can't go use a cylindrical, I'm a hole uh, around file. So depending, depending on the type of work that you're doing then, the cross-sectional area will differ. But the hand file, here by your hand, that is the most basic one about a pattern in most workshops. Now, I want to play this video. I had played it last time, but it was showing a summary huh, of uh, the filing process. So please uh, let me know whether you can hear anything and let me know whether you can, uh, whether the video is clear. Now, that video has just shown us the, the process of, of imetonesha. That process itself has shown us the, 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 filing, the, the filing process from the types of files to the techniques used in filing. Uh, and and the, the, the the thing that I want to mention eh, in that in that um, in that process, I mean, in that uh, video, is that umeona katika procedure anatumia mikono miwili. He's using two hands. You'll find what we are using one hand. There's a very specific way of doing that process of filing. Now, when you when you are doing the, the process, when you when you're working with your file, remember to make sure that your workpiece is securely held. Kuna machine ama, ama kuna tool ambayo inatumika katika katika workshop inaitwa bench vice. A bench vice is a is a tool that is used for holding your workpiece. Make sure that your workpiece is is securely held. Kisha if you are going to be to be to be if you are going to be working with your with your 
with your file and you're right-handed, then you hold the handle with your, with your right hand. Huh? Then with your left hand, huh? this is my file. I will use, if I'm right-handed, I will use my right hand to hold the handle, and then my left hand will use the file. And if I'm left-handed, I'll use my left hand to hold the handle, and my right hand will use the file. Now, what do I do? My bench vice is facing me. If I'm right-handed, then I will position myself on the left side of the bench vice. If I'm right-handed, no, if I'm left-handed, then I will posi position myself on the right side of the bench vice. Now, when I'm filing, generally, uh, we have seen that there are very many techniques of filing, but in the, uh, in the most, the easiest, um, the most general way of filing is you will apply pressure on the forward stroke. That is when you apply pressure. Don't see no No. Apply pressure when going forward. The hand that you are applying pressure with, remove it. So don't apply pressure when you are coming back. But do not remove your file on the return stroke. So forward stroke, apply pressure on the return stroke, release that pressure and and um, rudisha file. Hands the process tenor, release pressure, rudisha file. Are we together? To copper mode? Now, uh, that is a basic process of filing, yeah? Uh -huh. Now, the, 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 the next process eh, that we had talked about was threading, eh? and we, we have seen threads. Kila mtu hapa na joa mesha wana thread ili as group. And we said that the, the process of cutting those helical threads is the threading. Eh? You are you're, you're chipping, you are removing parts of a metal so that you can create those helical uh, threads. Now this can be done, eh? and we saw it. Eh? We saw that it can be done by a machine, and it can be done by hand. But even before I go to that, there is this diagram eh? that shows the nomenclature, how the naming, how the terms that you have to, to know. Ikifika katika mambo ya threads. We talked about the. Uh, is the diagram clear? Diagram is clear. Yeah. Okay, now we had talked about the major diameter, we had talked about the pitch diameter, there is also the minor diameter. Yeah, We had talked about the helix angle, the pitch, the root, yeah? depth, the crest, thread angle, lead. If you are if you, if you there, if you are in that class, you can remember. So I won't go back into those terms. What you can do for those who have come, joined us today is you can take this diagram and go research. I'm going to do, go Google and find out what these uh, terms mean when it comes to uh, threads. Now, I will play a video so that I, we can see how threading is usually done by a lathe machine in the, in the workshop. By now I know, we already know what a lathe machine is. Okay? So we will see a video to see how it is done using a lathe machine. Now this is a, it's a this is a basic machining process. Kuna yeah? facing, kuna turning. We'll be given a blank cylindrical workpiece. Yeah? So in a lathe machine, you can be able to drill. You can be able to make threads. You can be able to face facing nile. You are about to learn a I'm a petition that cutting tool across the diameter of that um, of that uh, workpiece. Ili iwe safi. Now, when you're doing that, uh, selecting the gear that you will use in your lathe machine, uh, now the, the, the speed and all that, kuna eh? vitabu, those things have already been calculated. Uh, so there are books, there are charts. Uh, those things, you, you can't know them by head. So you go there, you check those charts, you, you check the books and find out at what speed uh, can I... This is your cutting tool. 
internal threading is also known as tapping. It is known as tapping. But what you see is that the the the, the that cutting tool is usually placed at an angle. But we'll see more we'll see more that when you go to the workshop. I just want to introduce that uh, briefly. Now, this, this can also be done. No, as I was explaining, the, 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 those calculations, some of those gears, zishafanyo. Uh, so where mwenye amba unataka kutengeneza thread, you will go there, go to that lathe machine, uh, with, the, with the idea of the type of thread that you want to make, you will enter those values, uh, so that you can know at what speed can I safely cut my threads. Uh, are we together? Mtu wenda ngi tuwa poko yoyo machine unaeka tu chochote alafu unawasha machine. No. It might be too dangerous. So you have to choose the gear correctly. You have to choose the pitch correctly. You have to choose many things correctly. And all those things can be done there at the, at the, at the machine itself. Now we can also be able to do it by hand. Na sana sana we, this is usually done by people ambao wanafanya wanafanya plumbing he has to secure his workpiece properly otherwise kazi ambayo utafanya inaweza haribikia as you do it the workpiece might get loose and destroy the, the, the equipment it might injure you ama kazi yenyewe iharibike now this is known as a pipe vice. Is in specifically a uh, plumbing. Hii kitu ambayo amefunga ya kwanza inaitwa G clamp. G clamp. Always make sure you lubricate because this is a cutting process. So there will be production of heat. So to make sure that your threads that are produced hazina uh, sio rough hazita uh, vunjika when they are applied pressure uh, so you have to make sure that you, you apply the uh, the lubrication ukitumia uh, hii wrench uh, you have to go backwards uh, as much as unaisongesha mbele you also have to go anti clockwise to remove those chippings those materials ambazo unakata they have to be removed Otherwise, we can delay to cut and use chip inzi kio kondani. Thread zako zitavunjiki andani. So you flash. You have to go backwards. If you're fortunate enough to do a plumbing project, you'll be able to see this. But what is making here is the external threads. Zile threads ambazo tunapata nje. Now, there is something very important. Never use your hands kusafisha that part. Those threads are usually very sharp. So if you dare use your hands utakatwa. And it is very painful. Okay. Now, threads kulingana na kazi ambayo unazitengeneza you can have different types of threads if you are making threads yeah, for kukazia kitu yeah, fastening if you are going to be making threads kama zile ambazo tunatumia kwa screws yeah, we have different types you have metric threads and we have whitworth threads yeah, both of them are v shaped these are the most common ones that we see power transmission threads yeah, kwa mfano zile ambazo there is a, there is a very uh, there is something known as a rack and pinion yeah. gear. Mm-hmm. These are threads that are used in gear. Yeah. The ones that are used in in transmitting power. Then uh, we have knuckle threads, uh, we have acme threads, and we have so tooth threads. Mm-hmm. I'll show you just briefly the differences. Mm-hmm. You can see the the thread angle. Yeah, 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 yeah. The V threads, the Whitworth. It is V, yes, but the thread angle is. Uh, is less the root ya hii ni sharp hii nayo ni a bit uh, uh, ni kama valley we have buttress acme square warm this is sana zinatumika for for this last four 
This battery square Acme and uh, WOM are used for power transmission. This is uh, we use for, for fastening purposes. Now, what we've just seen in the previous videos is external threading. In the first video, there was a bit of internal threading. Yeah? But sana sana internal threading is, 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 is usually done by hand. Uh, well, katika mta yako ama ukenda mali ambapo unataka kutengenezea thread yako itakuwa inafanywa by hand uh, so we have tools that we can use by hand small threads uh, si hizi ambazo una, unatengeneza kwa pipe ama kwa machine no a very tiny one wewe hmm? mwenyewe katika project yako and you want to make internal threads uh, and maybe uh, the hole ambayo unataka kuweka thread is let's say 5 mm 1 uh, cm very tiny Uh, then kupeleka hiyo katika lathe machine then will be too cumbersome uh, so we have a manual threading process uh, and the video that i want to show you is the internal threading process tapping mm-hmm. by using hand tools uh, so please pay attention and let me know whether you can hear clearly Swali hapa. Is there a question? Kama tuko pamoja please unmute useme uko present. 
present. Present. Present. present. Thank you, thank you. In that in that video, I think we've seen we've seen how these threads are made, the internal ones. We have things known as taps. Taps are what you're cutting that uh, piece of metal so that they can engrave uh, the threads in that piece of metal in a cut that in a thing and other threads. We have um, the wrench. The wrench ambayo inetumika kufanya yo kazi. This one. We have uh, we have uh, this counter countable sink. Kuna ile drilling ya kwanza now. The process itself is you have to drill a hole. thread. This is just to make sure that you have a, a passageway to allow you to enter to kuingiza hizi your taps. After you have drilled your hole, you use this counter sinking bowl to enlarge in that entrance. So that tap yambaya kwanza utako kuingiza itatoshe. Now this is uh, the first tap is known as the entering tap. Right? That is usually done kukata araka, the rough cutting process. After you are done, uh, you, we go with the finishing tap, ama the plug tap. Kumalizia hiyo shimo. And then the third one ni ya kumali the finishing tap. Right? As you can see the distance of the cutting of the cutting mali ambapo unakatia hizo threads zina differ. It differs. Now the, the last the last uh, tap ambayo inatumika ni kusafisha tu to ensure that the threads are working and once you are satisfied with the threads then you can be able to uh, fasten your, your screw now there is this nut tap a nut tap is a different one than these three serial taps a nut tap eh, if i don't want to go through that process ya kutumizi tatu i can just use the nut tap directly it itafanya hiyo kazi yote for those three, it will uh, it will act as an entering tap, it will act as the uh, plug tap, and it will act as the finishing tap. But now this is usually done whether ile wakati uko na haraka. But now the threads that are formed when you use this uh, might not be as strong uh, and smooth as when you use three these three uh, serial taps. Now this is the wrench. Hapa ndio mahali ambapo unaweka ile tap. Inside the wrench we have the die holder. Die holder, I don't know whether you've been, you know what a wrench is. Tunajua a wrench nini? Kwa mfano, talk wrench ama ama ile wrench natumika kufungua nini? Bolts za gari. Spanner. Kuna ile spanner ambayo ukifungua, we don't have to remove it to fit it again kisha ukafungua unazungusha unarudisha nyuma unazungusha unarudisha nyuma unazungusha unarudisha nyuma that is what we call a wrench i don't know I'll, I'll send you a video so that you can see how a wrench works or you can even go do, do research natumia video nyingi sana do research and find out the, the wrench i don't know in this processes unaona kwamba akizungusha hatoi hiyo hiyo tool eh, anaingiza tena kisha anazungusha no anazungusha anairudisha nyuma what happens akirudisha nyuma is it won't airudi nyuma from beginning no it goes to the next part yeah, that he wants to cut kisha and the leg so go find out how a wrench works now we have the die holder mali ambapo unaweka your taps so once you 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 you, you ukizungusha your wrench then uh, the, 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 the die holder inazunguka yeah. unarudisha nyuma the, the wrench yeah una una ina 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 ukizungusha mara ya kwanza ukirudisha nyuma ni kama it unlocks so the wrench is free to move ukisongesha mbele tena ina lock so it moves together with the die holder ukirudisha nyuma it unlocks so it is free to move ukisongesha mbele tena ina lock na hiyo die holder inasonga that is how basically a wrench works but in this case for the this this threading ukisongesha mbele itasonga mbele ukisongesha nyuma itasonga nyuma and the purpose why we do it, that is to remove those chippings those chippings are muscles in a cut on that we do not want them there but as we continue that threading process if you continue threading and we are not removing the chipping those chippings will break they will break our our threads zitafanya threads our threads to be rough 
Now, how do you designate threads? Ama how do you name threads? Ama ukiandikia thread utajuaje hii thread hii namna gani vile kuna number plate ya gari. These threads ukiona mahali ukisome utaona mfano M8. You should know as an engineer that this means that this is a metric thread and it is 8 nominal diameter. Kuna M10 121.25 metric thread has a diameter of 10 mm and the thread pitch the distance between one crest of the pitch of the thread to the next one is 1.25 mm so these are the types of naming this is how threads are named this is an example of a metric thread so which of threads are named different buttress threads are named different are we together When you go and look at the charts za kutengeneza threads in the workshop ama in the in the stemma kwa kitabu you will find this commonly okay? utapata m8 ama m10 on 25 then it gives you the lead okay? it gives you those tables eh yeah? zitakuwa zimeandikwa in numbers so those numbers have meanings eh? so those are usually the name means ama how those threads are usually named and i think i'm done yeah? mambo ya thread nitamalizia hapo. Kuna swali? Any question? This topic is very wide. It's very very wide. Ni na kasi civil engineering. Ni unajua sasa wewe kama ma engineer, wacha nikwambie kitu moja. In engineering the, those first the, the first uh, few years you'll be working as an engineer hakunanga ati sivyo alama ninyi wote mko pamoja eh? you all doing the same thing the thing that you learning here is the same thing mechanical engineers are learning the same thing marine engineers are learning you will still apply the same knowledge wewe well, kama mi mfano mi am a marine engineer where as an electrical engineer can come work in, the, in a ship very comfortably sawa so, sawa so atakai na kai na kasi hivyo usishtuke bana. Hii mambo mtakuwa mnakaa chini mnaongea mnasema hata mimi najua akiongelea na hata wewe ukiongea atasema anajua. If you are together say I'm present. Present. Tuko pamoja. Present. Kabisa. Now, what are electrical materials? Electrical materials you mean? Anyone? What do you think the term electrical materials means? Hmm? Electrical materials. Okay, inaonekana kuna mtu atajaribu. Kwa nini kiwamia muandike notes mnaandika nini ba? Mnaandika anga notes kweli. <laughs> Ama naambia na wapatia kazi mnafunga hiyo chapter mpaka tupatane next time na ngoja nikuje nisome nifundishe. Kimaandika lakini you need to kubwa kweli. Yeta ni summarized my friend. Eh? Kama tulikuwa tunaingia in depth ah unge, unge Now electrical materials these are the things we used in basic installations electrical installation eh? conductors eh? kuna ile insulator wa ambayo unatumia ni ina conductor ina, ina insulator semiconductor now there is something i know most of you have never encountered and i want you to do this as homework this magnetic materials this is something new and i know most of us have never interacted with them go find out read understand what magnetic materials are katika mambo ya electrical Uh, as a, as an electrical material ni nini now electrical materials can be grouped into these four major categories we have conductors we have insulators we have semiconductors and we have uh, magnetic materials now a conductor is a material that f- uh, freely allows the uh, flow of current through it now we together this is usually brought about by a change a change in the voltage okay? in that in that uh, a potential difference katika hiyo material Now conductors can be metals, metal alloys, electrolytes and metals. Yeah. Metals ambazo zinaweza zinaweza conduct steam ni kama zipi? Mm. Give me an example. 
copper, silver. There are so many. Metal alloys. When you mix certain metals, then that the electrical conductivity also increases. Non metals come a graphite. No, ni amana wamu na ambi umseke penseli katika socket. Utapigwa shock, lakini watu askizi. Utona mtu anaingiza penseli katika socket. Now, when you when you ta- when you're talking about uh, conductors, it can have high resistance ama a low resistance. Fine, conductors allow electricity to flow through them. But si kumaanisha kwamba conductors have to be good conductors of electricity. No, there are some conductors that are very poor conductors of electricity, but are still conductors. Mm-hmm. They are used uh, for electric heating purposes. Kwa mfano heating coil. Ukienda ununua electric heater ununua electric heater katika katika duka kwa sababu kuna baridi nyumbani. That is still a conductor but you're utilizing electricity. It's high resistivity to 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 generate heat. Kwa mfano ile bulb, ile bulb iko kwa nyumba ile ile bulb ambayo iko na tungsten. We are utilizing that uh, the high resistivity of tungsten. It still conducts electricity, yes, but uh, we use it to generate heat for heating purposes. So we can generally categorize conductors of, as having a high a high high conductor, I mean high resistivity ama low resistivity. Now, when we talk about uh, properties of conductors, resistance. The resistance of a conductor to mesema can be uh, high ama low. If it is a low resistance then it easily conducts electricity. If there is the there is the, the resistivity of a conductor is high eh, then it, we can use it to make uh, heating elements kama filaments. Kuna kitu inaitwa inductance. I don't know if you have interacted with that term inductance before. Umepatana na mahali. So what is the, 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 when an electrical conductor when you pass electricity through a conductor uh, you'll find that that conductor uh, generates an EMF uh, and I'm sure now when I talk about these terms you understand what they mean you generate an EMF hmm? that EMF uh, will oppose uh, will oppose that the, 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 the you'll find that a change in the current passing through that uh, conductor will generate a uh, uh, a magnetic field around it that magnetic field then induces an emf eh? so that e- emf will oppose the changing current ile ile current ambayo inaisababisha it will oppose it hmm? so when a conductor is used in ac supply then you will find that there is a magnetic field being produced hmm? so in that field kuna an external one and kuna an internal field kuna ile ambayo itakuwa around the conductor but there will also be an, a magnetic field inside the conductor Now the the field inside the conductor is nindogo as compared to the 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 what the the ile ambayo iko nje so you find that the interaction between these two fields the magnetic field on the outside and the magnetic field on the inside as it interact then induction uh, inductance will happen mm? an emf will be produced which will uh, which will oppose the change in current causing it now that inductance will cause a voltage drop if 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 let's say you're transporting you're transporting ac kwa kwa you you transport for longer distances if you're transporting ac for short distances then voltage drop might not be an issue but if you're transporting ac for long distances you're distributing it for long distances then you have to consider the property of inductance in the, in that conductor kwa sababu it will cause a voltage drop So the, what happens is that current will now prefer to flow on the skin or on the outer part of the cross sectional area of that conductor. This is usually known as uh, skin effect. Sijui kama niwapoteza kidogo lakini nilikuwa na explain to kidogo kuhusu inductance how that is a property of conductors. Now another property is that the electric field inside a conductor is zero. Why? If there was an electric uh, field existing inside a conductor then it will exact a force on electrons eh? electrons are those free moving particles within the conductor but when uh, the, the the conductor is in equilibrium then there won't be any force so the force is zero mm-hmm. then what happens is then this uh, 
this the lack of force within the conductor then allows that free movement of 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 uh, the electrons ndio maana unapata katika conductor there are free electrons because there is no electric field within the conductor now charge density inside the conductor is zero why because there is no electric field in in, in the conductor remember that electrons are negatively charged ions so when you have a negative charged ion and a negative charged ion they uh, close uh, i mean zikipatana they repel each other mm? they will be the, the property is that they will be far away as far away from each other as possible now what happens is that the the, the what happens is that there is no electric charge within the conductor and therefore there is no density you know? there is no yeah there is no charge density inside the conductor now free charge only exists on the surface because the, the, there is no charge density in the conductor because sababu the the electrons are being they are repelling each other because because they are negatively charged zita, zita move eh, sana sana towards the the edge ama the surface of the conductor so what happens is that the charge eh, the charge in that conductor is usually found on on the surface what we've termed as skin effect So those are basic properties of of conductors. I'm sure you have others in your notes. Zile mliandika. Zile mliandika si ndio? Si mliandika properties ama mli amkoandika. Ah kama amkoandika mtaandika sasa. Now, uh Now we we had already mentioned types of conductors kuna copper kuna aluminium kuna maji eh? uh, electrolytes eh? ionic salts when you take ionic salts and mix them with a solution you have an electrolyte so that electrolyte can also be a conductor of electricity uh-huh. now what are insulators hmm? insulators ni nini hmm? what do you mean, what do i what do you mean by the term insulator What is an insulator? Alfred. Uh, insulators are materials which does not conduct uh, electricity. Yes. They are poor conductors of heat or electricity. Now, examples of of insulators ni kama wood, glass, plastic, even air can be an insulator. Now, What are some of the properties of insulators? Eh? They have high resistivity. Mm-hmm. They don't allow the flow of current easily. Mm-hmm. Insulators also have a large dielectric strength. What this means is that the the insulation material that dielectric strength is that maximum ama the minimum voltage eh, that the the insulation can handle before it fails. Ile mm-hmm. voltage ama current yenye yenye the maximum or is it the minimum the maximum yes eh, that it can handle before it 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 it, it fails before kuna sana sana i think katika charger zetu ama the cables that we use ile siku ambayo utaona utaona charger yako inachomeka insulation imeungua kumaanisha that that voltage the voltage supply imezidi the rated voltage of that the cap- the capability of that charger So that maximum voltage that that charger can handle before that insulation breaks or before it fails is now known as dielectric strength. Now this means that insulation insulators have dielectric strength. It is it is large. So they have they must have otherwise utaumia sana utapigwa shock sana. They have a high mechanical strength why? They have to be able to carry the tension and the weight of conductor. This is sana sana seen when you insto- when we doing heavy installations. Kama unafanya underground installations ama you are installing wires ama cables that are heavy. You might not uh, understand ama you might not see this when you t- when we refer to insulation kama ya charger ama ya earphones. But when you're talking about insulation of heavy cables these are that are used for uh, power transmission then you have, those insulation must be capable of uh, of handling the, the the weight and we will see how this is possible when we talk about the construction of cables now the electrical and chemical property of course it, it must be stable that conductive that insulator must be stable 
when exposed to the elements sia tu kipeleka your uh, insulator nje unapeleka charge hapo ina ukiweka kwa jo inaungua ama ina melt no they should be able to be to be stable uh they should be free from unwanted impurities the presence of impurities in a, in a, in a, in a, an insulator will will make it more conductive kwa mfano if i have metallic impurities in a, in a, in a, in insulator and then i expose that insulator to an electric charge then that insulator will at some point conduct electricity it might not be a lot but it might it will be enough to it might cause harm so make sure that there is no impurities in in your insulator now another uh, electric material is semiconductors uh, this now is a material whose whose uh, conductive capabilities lie between that of uh, a conductor and uh, and a non conductor man insulator now depending on the application of your semiconductor then we can increase the conductivity ama we can reduce the conductivity and how do we do this now the, the semiconductors are usually grouped as intrinsic now intrinsic uh, semiconductors are pure semiconductors hmm? these are semiconductors that chemically this they are chemically uh, pure as is aongezo chochote this is how they are found in in nature kwa mfano we have silicon silicon is a, a pure semiconductor we have extrinsic extrinsic semiconductors are those that we have to add impurities yeah, to change their uh, conductivity capabilities and this the, the adding of impurities is known as doping kama ile doping ambayo athletes do kuongeza madawa katika mwili it's the same the same eh? when you add impurities into a semiconductor eh? what we get is an extrinsic semiconductor this usually gets uh, gives gives rise to uh, types of conductor semiconductors known as p type or n type eh? depending on the type of impurity if i put a a, a trivalent eh? Imp- impurity a trivalent impurity is one that has three atoms eh? ama three electrons it contributes three electrons to our pure to a pure to a pure semiconductor to give us a p type uh, extrinsic semiconductor if i add that pentavalent impurity to a pure uh, semiconductor it will give me a, a, a an n type uh, semiconductor now some of the properties of semiconductor is that the uh, as i have mentioned before is that the this uh, capability of a, of a semiconductor is lies between that of a conductor and a semiconductor mm-hmm. depending on the application if i want it to be uh, a semiconductor for example uh, a, a pure semiconductor intrinsic semiconductors yeah. their conductivity yeah, and their resistivity is purely dependent on temperature so if i increase the temperature of that uh, semiconductor then what happens yeah, is that the conductive the conductivity also increases yeah? if i reduce the temperature then the conductivity uh, reduces yeah? for 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 uh, for for the intrinsic semiconductors okay now for they also have a negative t- temperature of que- of, of, of temperature coefficient of resistance now there is a calculation to do this but this basically means that if i reduce the temperature of uh, of my surrounding number of that semiconductor then the, the resistance increases uh, the resistance of that semiconductor increases and if i reduce the temperature uh, no if i increase the temperature of that uh, semiconductor then the resistance increases uh, and this is usually prevalent ama we see this sana sana in intrinsic ama semi ama pure semiconductors that are uh, the wh- whose performance is, is is largely dependent on temperature for extrinsic zile ambazo unaongeza impurities then depending on the type of impurity then that you add to that semiconductor then if i want it to be more conductive kwa mfano i will add uh, let's say metallic impurities i will add a metallic impurity to increase its conductivity if i want it to be more resistive ama it, it will act more as a resistor then i add uh, resistive uh, impurities are we together Yes. Any question? 
swali if you're together unmute and say i'm present Now, these are things that I'm sure you will come across in your, in your, read, Emma, in your reading. Mm? As you continue uh, learning, mtapatana nazo. Now, a cable. Mm? Before I even talk about what a cable is, I want, us to, I want you to tell me, mm. do you know what the difference is between a cable and a wire? Mnajua tofauti ya cable na wire ni nini? Wapana. Ato ujajaribu umesha sema wapana. <laughs> uh, we'll try. What is the difference between a cable and a wire? Cable ni moja. Wire they are intertwined mingi. Mm. Uh, ume, ume, umefanya inverse. It is the other way around. Uh, a wire is usually just one. One conductor. Uh, but if I take um, different types of conductor, I mean more than one conductor in there, I can gr- group them together, and as is shown up a model, then that becomes a cable. So, mm-hmm. so. Yes. Now, uh, I gave an assignment yes. so that we can see the different types of cables. And the reason why I gave an assignment is because of the construction of these cables. Mm-hmm. Because you'll find that uh, the general construction of a cable is that uh, I'll show you in a few but whatever we are talking about here sana sana are power cable those that, that, that we use to transmit electricity from one place to another but cable za ina nyingi kuna ile ambayo tunatumia kama ya internet that is still a cable but it doesn't transport electricity then that transports data there is also that we use for videos ile cable ambayo unaweka kwa tv from your decoder that is still a cable but we are not transporting electricity. What we are transporting is data signals. So cables are in nyingi. And depending on the application and the type of cable, then you'll see that the construction of those cables are different. Now, what do cables? When I mean, when, when I, I don't know, when I gave, when I gave this assignment, Maria Kwanza, it was it's not even an assignment. He let Maria Kwanza in Kambia out and he and I asked people to write construction of cables. I got very, very, very interesting, interesting uh, notes. Now, construction. Eh? What are these cables usually made of? Eh? What do they consist of? Eh? For the main, the main parts of a cable, okay, fungo angali and dani. We have the, the conductor itself. I mean, this is. Uh, I'm talking about power cables. Mm-hmm. We will have the conductor that you are trying, that is carrying current and voltage. We also have insulation, the insulation that uh, prevents you from getting shocked, that protects the, the, the people from the current inside. We have something, I don't know if you have ever heard this term before, a sheath. Sheath is what uh, protects that cable uh, from mechanical damage. So depending on the type of cable, you'll find that uh, conductors it are labda nimbili. Uh, so you have a single core cable. There might be four. There might be three. Uh, the insulation will be different. Uh, there is that that will be insulated with rubber. There is that that will be insulated with PVC. Uh, there is that that will be insulated with uh, polythene. Kuna ile ile ambaya tayin aita kwa na insulation. Sheath. Yeah. There are those that are protected externally. Yeah. On top of that insulation, there is another external protection. Mm. It might be metallic. Mm. It might be plastic again. So it depends with the application of the cable. But the main, uh, p- uh, the main zile ambazo utapata katika any type of power cable kutakuwa na conductor will have the insulation and will have the mechanical protection, which is known as the sheath. Now this is a simple diagram that shows these um, these parts. We have the conductor that carries the, the the electricity and the voltage. In this case, we have three. So this will essentially be a will be a three core cable. On a three cores, number three conductors. On uh, what is covering the conductor, the yellow, the blue, and the red is the the the, the insulation. In this case, this is a three phase cable. Uh, these th- colors, uh, general colors, denoting the three phases. Uh, so this is uh, 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 the insulation. Now, 
that insulation is wrapped around a sheath. This protects that those uh, the, the insulation from uh, mechanical damage. Now this armor uh, is usually a sheet of metal. On a tengeneza sheet of metal, I might might be wire may be braided. Kama vile asema na braid nyayo. So it might be a wire that has been braided. It might be an impregnated paper. When I say impregnated, me ikaratasi ambayo may be surrounded by something known as resin hmm, to make it stronger hmm, to increase its uh, durability so this armor is just a way of also adding mechanical protection na kuipatia rigidity hmm. you can also add another sheet hmm. now this is why i gave that assignment i wanted you to give me at least 5 to 10 different types of cables so that you can see the different constructions utaangalia the different ya uh, Yeah, coaxial cable now angalia the difference between the let's say mineral insulated cables you see the differences eh? between the insulations the, the conductors the sheets the armoring mm-hmm. so, so. yes yes now we have seen the different type of conductors we saw kuna silver kuna aluminum kuna steel but sana sana the ones that we use are copper and aluminum copper because it is cheap and readily available but it also it also has its, its disadvantages so depending on mwanzo kutegemea na ile kazi ambayo unafanya and second kutegemea na your pocket then it will determine the type of cable ambayo utanunua the best conductor of electricity in the world is silver but silver is very expensive so we can't go buy in silver kisha tunaitengeneza tunaifanya ikawa wire ama cable it will be too expensive mm-hmm. now how do we label cables ama how do we represent them mm-hmm. when you go and find a cable to tapata it is been labeled like this we have 7 stroke a 19 stroke b that is 7 stroke c now what does this mean a cable kumbuka is a grouping of conductors ama single wires together mm-hmm. so that number the first number indicates the The, those how many wires are in that cable up and down in ngapi the b and the c in a, in a, in, a, in a state the diameter the individual diameter of those wires is what in millimeters or centimeters are you together the same way we have designation of metri- of, of, of threads is the same way we also have designations of cables the first number indicates the number of uh, wires or conductors inside the cable the second uh, number uh, denotes the size of that the diameter of those individual wires okay insulation insulation ambayo tumezoea sana sana ni rubber kama hii ya phone ama ya charger those are the most common ones but when you are transmitting power in in high voltage in high voltage then you have to find uh, insulation with a high dielectric strength Yeah. so we have impregnated paper imesema impregnated paper ni paper ambayo imekuwa imeekwa something vitu kama resin yeah. imekauka it's not the normal paper ambayo tumezoea hapana it's just a paper ambayo imezungusha it has a, 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 a substance yeah. put inside it. that substance in ikikauka inafanya that paper to be such a very uh, good insulation material uh, and the most common is resin mm. we have rubber we have pvc mm. polyvinyl uh, chloride cable this is the specific major pvc in do you have an idea what pvc is yes yeah yeah then we have polythene uh, types of insulation yeah so there are so many there are so many types of insulation depending on the, the The, the, the place where you are doing your installation confirm if you're going to be doing installation on a, on a ship the type of insulation you choose will be different and the insulation you will use for the cable that you are doing in house installations why the ocean environment is more aggressive the ocean environment is more in a cooler sana because of the salty uh, nature of the, of the of the environment it's a harsh environment the type of insulation ambayo unatumia katika nyumba then it will be less uh, itakuwa less powerful as compared na ile ambayo unatumia katika meli in a sheath eh? this is for uh, protection so you're protecting your uh, your your 
the cables, some of the conductors from entry of water and moisture. Uh, we do not want moisture in our, in our conductors. This will just lead to short circuiting. Yeah. Now, protective covering. Yeah. This is your uh, after you've done uh, your, your, after you've put your inner sheath, then kulingana na ile kazi ambayo kibolea kuinafanya, then you might add a, 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 a protective covering on top of your sheath. So it might be uh, Hessian paper, it might be uh, impregnated paper, it might be PVC. This all it does is protects your cable. It inongeze more protection, be it mechanical, waterproofing. Uh, uh, it just adds uh, a layer of protection. Now, armoring is a very important uh, process when you come to cabling. Uh, when you take a sheet of steel, uh, armor braided steel, and then you layer it uh, around your, your sheath, what you've done is you've added mechanical protection. Uh, this is just to ensure that your, 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 your cable can withstand uh, the mechanical forces that are subjected to it. Uh, now, in some types of cables, uh, cable, uh, you'll find that the armory yeah, the, the, it's a single core cable that only has one conductor and an armor around it so the conductor is it carries the life current and the armor is the return yeah, the ground so armory can also be used for earthing yeah. now we have the oversheath the oversheath is that uh, final protection now this can be there might cannot be there it just depends with the application of your of your cable yeah. To copper module. Yes. Now, what are some of the factors to consider when you're choosing cables? Yeah. Which are some of the factors that we consider? Cable installation. Yeah. That is one of the main of the main factors. When we come an engineer, yeah. have to be have to be conversant with confirm all the talks. Yeah. That you uta utatumia kukazia cable yako. Usiendo ukakaza cable yako too much. So you have to be aware, the people who we are working with, they also have to be aware about the, the, the installation processes. Is it an outdoor installation or is it an indoor installation? Which type of distribution system are you using? Which type of uh, wiring system are you using? So depending on those, uh, uh, your knowledge, then you can choose different types of cables. Huh? Cable construction. We have just seen the construction of cables. Then, depending on the type of cable about the chagul, huh? whether it is a, a, a huh? whether it is a, a um, whether I'm using it for data, whether I'm using it for for power, then I, I will choose uh, different type of cables. If I'm using it to supply, I might distribute high voltage uh, high voltage current and volt and, 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 and high voltage current. Then I will use a cable that has a higher, uh, an insulation with a higher dielectric strength as compared if I'm, uh, I'm, I'm using a cable for low voltage transmissions. Mm -hmm. The arrangement of the, of the cable, it bad to call katika construction. Is it a single core cable or is it a double core? I'm a three core cable. Mm -hmm. Each of those arrangements of the conductors has its advantages and disadvantages. So you have to be aware. Mm -hmm. Of, of those uh, conditions, yeah. the insulation number one to me and the covering, yeah. will it be able to withstand the surrounding temperatures? Yeah. Will it be able to withstand the loads number one one is subjected to? Ama kukiwa na shida kidogo that insulation ina chomek. Now cable operation. The cable that you are you're choosing must be able to withstand those voltage stresses. Yeah. Kama kuna shida, then there should be a, an allowable limit that cable that, that that cable can be able to withstand. And sana sana, then we have this this uh, this uh, insulation is usually chosen uh, according to the face to face voltage. Now cable size, and this is usually one of the most important points. Yet I I think it can be a subtopic, a topic on its own. How to choose a cable size? They usually calculations on top of calculations uh, on how to determine the cable size. Kama sahi ukienda wambio wanafaa ku install kufanya installation katika mba mba unaishi sahi ama mahali uko sa sahi which size of cable will you use? So you have to consider the current carrying capacity of that cable. You have to consider the voltage regulation of that cable. You have to consider the short, short circuit rating of that cable. 
kukiwa na shida if there is a short circuit will that cable be able to handle that error before he, before that short circuit is rectified ama kukiwa tu na shida kidogo cable ina ina, ina, ina unguo. voltage regulation that cable ambayo unatumia should be able to uh, there is an allowable limit that the voltage drop should occur the voltage drop should not be more than the voltage that you are transmitting set unaweka cable alafu unapata kwamba you are losing more voltage than you are transmitting are we together yes now now how do i determine uh, the size my my cable size and even before i start calculating for the cable size there are some things ama there are some rules unwritten rules they're not even unwritten they are written yeah? by these there is uh, these bodies that regulate ama they give direction on 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 this on these laws now you should when, when you're doing an installation kila mahali kama it's a pneumatic system kama ni an electrical system you have to take into consideration the future expansion of that uh, system kwa mfano if i'm doing a pneumatic system nataka kuweka hydraulics katika industry if i'm doing the pipe work then i should be able to uh, put my 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 workshop uh, we did workshop layouts india tukasema that you have to take into consideration the, the expansion kama uta expand so if you, the same thing uh, cable then it should be able to to to, to withstand uh, 20% more current sometimes it's even rated 50% more current uh, for emergency needs for future needs uh, if you're expanding uh, the voltage drop uh, uh, it should be 1.25 from the from the the mali ambapo una una unatoa kwa main mpaka kwa final circuit and not and it's equal more than 2.5 uh, katika supply voltage from the from the lines this 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 uh, is sana sana is between they say up to 5% now this is to ensure that you don't lose uh, your your voltage yeah. the voltage supply ambayo the, the voltage that you actually get in your in your circuit ama in your machine is the rated voltage ama ile ambayo imekuwa advertised if you if you if you choose a cable that uh, loses more voltage because of resistance because of heating then you will find that your voltage drop sometimes even exceeds you are losing more voltage it will exceed the amount of voltage that you are getting uh, should be able to, to to with the cable that you are choosing be able to uh, in the ambient temperatures can it withstand the ambient temperatures the surrounding temperatures ama temperature ki increase kidogo cable ina ina ina, ina sambaratika wiring system there are very many different wiring system kuna ile underground kuna ile uh, overhead there are so many so there are so many different uh, factors to consider when you when you choose the size of a cable now Around, since it's not in our syllabus to do the calculations right, of determining the, the the size of the cable we won't do that but it is good to know what to consider when you're choosing uh, when you're selecting the size of the cable and the most important factor when you're selecting the size of the cable is this when you're calculating voltage drop voltage drop data kusaidia kusasa kutafuta the the size of the, of the of the of the of the cable yeah if there is a, a temperature issue then kuna temperature factor tables there is a table ambayo utaenda usome ukaangalia how to rectify by including a temperature factor in your calculations you also have to include a 20% uh, more in your calculations so that you can uh, be able to uh, uh, to factor in uh, for future expansion for emergencies mm -hmm. then the wiring system this is very important if i'm going to choose my cable for underground installations you know, the size will be different than the, the one that i will use for overhead installations zile installations ambazo tunafanya juu ya overhead kuna zile ambazo tunafanya katika ukuta 
So the type of wiring system will also determine the size of the cable. Now uh, we'll stop there.